Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> My name is Betty Siegel, and I'm the director of VSA and accessibility here at the Kennedy Center. And it is a pleasure to welcome all of you here for the opening night of the 2540 anniversary celebration, our celebration of two monumental anniversaries rolled into one awesome event. <laughs> Greetings, my name is Beth Zebarth, and I'm the director of the Smithsonian Accessibility Program. The Kenny Center and Smithsonian teamed up to bring you 11 days of events celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act and the 40th anniversary of VSA. So for the next 10 days, we have performances and exhibits here at the Kennedy Center honoring both the Americans with Disabilities Act and VSA's founder, Ambassador Jean Kennedy Smith. Now, all of our performances and events here are free and open to the public, and these performances and exhibits celebrate the contributions that people with disabilities have made to our collective history, art, and culture. It would be remiss of us to not also acknowledge the work done by this community's advocates and leaders and the importance of having the contributions of our artists, our creative people, and our innovators represented and valued in the larger context of society and culture. So after tonight's performance, I really strongly encourage you to visit all six of the exhibits around the center, and then I really encourage you to come back here to the Millennium Stage at 6 p.m. for some more amazing performances over the next 10 nights. <laughs> At the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History, Festival ADA, 25 Years of Disability Rights, runs from July 22nd through the 26th with a showcase, demonstrations, performances, a film festival, and panel discussions with disability rights leaders. So you can get a complete schedule. or at the center's uh, information desk in the Hall of States, or you can visit us online at www.2540celebration.com. And if, if you're so inclined, you can tweet, you can post, and Instagram your hashtag 2540celebration experiences. Other duties as assigned. <laughs> <laughs> Our social media team is giving away 10 tickets to the invitation only celebration concert featuring the amazing two time Grammy Award winner, jazz singer Diane Shore, on July 26th. So to enter, you have, and to win tickets, you and a friend have to take a photo somewhere here at the celebration and tag us on social media. <laughs> Tonight we are also collaborating with our colleagues in human and civil rights at the U.S. State Department. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to introduce you to one of the women at the forefront of the fight for disability rights, Ms. Judy Human. <laughs> That's my fan club. Good evening. It's a real pleasure to be here. As you've heard, my name is Judy Human, and I'm privileged to be the Special Advisor for International Disability Rights at the U.S. Department of Education. And I'm delighted to be here tonight to celebrate these significant events in the history of disability rights. The 40th anniversary of the founding of VSA, once called Very Special Arts, and the 25th anniversary of the signing of the Americans with Disabilities Act, otherwise known as the ADA. Four, 40 years ago, 
VSA was established to champion quality arts and arts education for people with disabilities. Thanks to VSA Arts and its affiliates, millions of disabled people of all ages have had and continue to have opportunities to enjoy, participate, and learn from the arts. 25 years ago also, on July 26, 1990, President George H. W. Bush signed the ADA. The ADA was the first comprehensive law guaranteeing equal rights to disabled people in the United States. It prohibits discrimination against those of us with disabilities in all areas of pub public life and promotes accessibility to jobs, schools, transportation, and all public and private places that are open to the general public. As President Bush said at that time, and this really is a quote that you should remember, let the shameful wall of exclusion finally come tumbling down. As a result of the ADA, every day I take an accessible bus to my job at the State Department, I work in an accessible environment, and I take an accessible train to my home. These and other changes are removing barriers and facilitating millions of disabled people to be full participants in our communities. You might be able to tell from my day glow yellow ADA t-shirt. <laughs> I, I took a lot of time to pick this out. That I'm a little bit proud of what we've accomplished. I'm proud to say that 25 years later, the ADA is still a beacon of hope for people around the world. As a model of what strong legislation can mean in the lives of disabled people here and abroad. I want to take a moment to do a shout out and recognize the nearly 50 foreign exchange participants from 33 countries in attendance tonight. Could you all raise your hand? They are here on a variety of State Department exchange programs on sharing, to learn about the American experience, to take this information home, and to begin to help their countries continue to be transformed. The State Department is also hosting viewing parties all around the world who are watching tonight's event online. I want to give a special shout out to our friends tuning in from Mexico, Rwanda, Morocco, Ukraine, Mauritius, Portugal, Jordan, Zimbabwe, New Zealand, Kuala Lumpur, and that distant Pensacola, Florida, and Seattle, Washington, <laughs> to name a few. I'd also like to thank my colleagues at the Kennedy Center, Betty and Beth from Smithsonian, and the State Department's Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs. And I believe Assistant Secretary Evan Ryan is here in the audience. And I'd like to thank everyone for making this evening possible. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the late Stella Young, an extremely talented Australian comedian and disabled rights activist. You can go online to YouTube and look up Stella. I met her last year. She was a real um, inspiration for all of the activities tonight. And unfortunately, she passed away too early, but her comedy still lives on. So go online and look for her. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce tonight's amazing performers. Two accomplished comedians, Ms. Shannon DeVito and Mr. Josh Blue. Please welcome to the stage and be prepared to laugh until it hurts. Actress, comedian, singer, and writer, Miss Shannon DeVito. And 
now, please welcome to the stage, actress and comedian Shannon DeVito. Hello. Thank you guys so much for coming out. It's so lovely to see all of you. It's lovely to see you, Joe Biden. Yeah, he didn't show up, did he? No. All those tweets that I sent out about this performance and inviting him. Hashtag, I swear I'm not creepy. Didn't work? All right. Got me on the NSA list, though, so that's fun. Yeah, well, I've always wanted to say my name's on the list, so I win. Uh, all right, well, yeah, I am very excited to be here celebrating the birthday of the ADA. You know, it's 25 years old now. It's probably moved back in with its parents and made some terrible relationship decisions and doesn't understand why places still don't take it seriously. Uh, but, it, you know, it's young. It's 25. It's, it's younger than Back to the Future and Taylor Swift and the McNugget. So basically what I'm saying is you could travel through time in a DeLorean while eating a 20-piece McNugget before I could legally get into the McDonald's. So that's fun. Shake it off, guys. Shake it off. Um, Taylor Swift humor? All right. Um, yeah. Taylor Swift fan. Uh, cool. Um, but, you know, I am very grateful for the ADA. It's opened a lot of doors for me automatically. And... Uh, but um, I still feel that people are a little awkward, you know, when they come up to me, they don't really know what to say. Uh, perfect example, I was sitting in a food court one day, and a gentleman comes up to me and he says, excuse me, ma'am, I know your life is terrible now, but don't worry, soon you'll be dead. <laughs> and you'll be sitting at the right hand of God. Now, huh, I'm gonna stop you there. Uh, one, the food court's not that bad. People don't take it seriously. <laughs> Number two, I don't know what you heard, sir, but I'm a terrible person. So if I'm going to be sitting at the right hand of God for literally sitting on my butt, eating baked Doritos and watching reruns of Gilmore Girls all day, pretty sure Mother Teresa's going to be ticked I took her seat. All right? But, uh, but you know, I do, I do think that people take my disability very seriously, and I do not. I joke about it all the time. Um, but people don't really know whether to laugh or not. So I've decided to take a new approach. Whenever someone comes up to me and starts to introduce themselves, I offer them my friendship. And they usually go, but Shannon, I already have 1,352 friends I ignore. What do I need another one for? And I always say, that's a great question, virtual popular person. Here's the reason. Because whenever I or anybody else makes a joke about being disabled, you can feel free to laugh because it's okay. You have a disabled friend. You're welcome. Yeah. You can stick that in your back pocket, break it out. I like to think that my friendship is like, like having a $500 condom in your back pocket. You think, you know, this is pretty cool, but when am I ever going to need this? And then you walk into a Panera and you see a guy who looks like Thor, and he starts quoting The Daily Show, and you go, oh, I get this now. Yeah. That's what my friendship is like. Um, really, in reality, my friendship's probably a lot more like 2 a.m. emergency phone calls because I accidentally watched an episode of House, and now I think I have this mysterious brain disease that you can only get in Beijing, and I've never been to Beijing because the plane ride's too long, and the Great Wall of China is a lot more like the mediocre wall of stairs. But uh, dream big, guys. Dream big. Um, but yeah, I love it here in D.C. Uh, I, I love the architecture that you guys have and the wonderful museums. Uh, question, though. Um, your subway stops running at 12. So what's that about? I assume it's because that's when, because John Boehner turns back into a carrot at the stroke of midnight. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so last time I was here, uh, I was out late, because I'm an adult and I do what I want, and uh, I got off the train, and I realized that the elevator was broken. Now, the last train had just went away, so uh, my first thought was, all right, well, I live here now. Uh, I hope that rat can cook. Um, but, uh, but then I came to my senses, and I, I started searching 
for the most large gentleman I could find. You know, it was like I was, I was training or finding the America's next top linebacker. Um, and so I got these two guys and they held my chair on an escalator as it went up. It was like they were my two Sherpas on the weirdest climb out Mount Everest. I'm gonna get a sticker for my chair. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I love it here and I, lo I love the government. Actually, true story, uh, when I graduated college, uh, I knew I wanted to become an entertainer uh, because I hate money. And uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really know where to look for jobs. So I went to the most logical place I could think of, Craigslist. Because <laughs> I thought, you know, in between the free uh, cats and the used mattresses, I would find an ad that said, Steven Spielberg is looking for a new leading lady, preferably small brunette in a wheelchair. Uh, it was not in there, surprisingly. Uh, but I did find an ad to be a singer for the US Navy. And I was like, yup, I'm doing that. So I called them up and I was like, hey, how's it going? I'd like to be in the Navy. And they were like, all right, great. Well, we just need to ask you a few questions, you know, height, weight, things like that. And then she said, do you take any medications? And I was like, oh yeah, I take Nexium for acid reflux. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, and she was like, all right, well, that should be okay. Now, I'm thinking, if that's not okay, oh, <laughs> this is gonna get awkward. Um, but then she said, do you have any physical restrictions? Now, in my defense, before I could say anything, she starts into a list. And she goes, are you hard of seeing? Are you hard of hearing? Are you missing any limbs? Do you have a mysterious illness from Beijing? <laughs> Jury's still out on that one. Um, but she didn't say, are you in a wheelchair? So I was like, mm, nope, whatever. It wasn't on the list. Don't judge me, I see you. <laughs> so she's like, great, come on down. You can be in the Navy. And I'm like, sweet. So I'm tooling around my house, super psyched, thinking about how adorable I'm gonna look in that little Navy uniform. You know, kind of like an American Girl doll, only after the war. <laughs> and uh, it turns out I, uh, I have a conscience, who knew? And it was like, hey, Shannon, uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't have lied to the military. And I was like, uh, all right. So. I call him back and I was like, hey, how's it going? Uh, I, I may have a physical restriction. She's like, well, what is it? And I was like, well, I'm in a wheelchair. She's like, well, for how long? And I was like, well, I mean, I'm not a doctor or Jesus, so could go away tomorrow, I don't know. But probably forever. <laughs> Uh, she was like, well, you can't be in the Navy. How do you expect to get on the ship? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me stop you there. You're telling me all those really hot Navy guys just standing around can't just lift me onto the ship or carry me around like they're queen? I mean, you do what you gotta do, right? Right? Am I right? Yeah, yeah, I was not right. Uh, so I did not get to be in the Navy. Um, but I have had a lot of random jobs while trying to be an actor. Uh, I've been an Olive Garden breadstick wrangler and uh, Elmo's bodyguard and a video wedding editor, uh, which is, the, they've all been very fun. Uh, but I've always thought that the best job that I could get, the one that I would be the best at, would be a drug dealer. <laughs> and here's the reason. Because no one would ever suspect me. I would never get caught. People don't expect me to leave my house, let alone have the ability to run a drug cartel. <laughs> Cops would come up to me and they'd be like, excuse me, ma'am, do you know anything about these drugs? Um, I can't lift milk. So, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that checks out, all right. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have drugs stashed in every orifice of my chair. <laughs> I'm like a designer cargo pant. Only I'm cheaper and easier to get. 20% metal, 100%, uh, 20% metal, 80%, nope. All right, I'll just try that again, guys. Jokes are hard. 20% uh, woman, 
80% metal, 100% awkward. <laughs> Gentlemen, Joe Biden. All right, I'll see you guys after the show. All right, guys, my name is Shannon DeVito. Thank you so much. And now, please welcome to the stage, comedian Josh Blue. Hey, what's up, everybody? All right. What an awesome event. Thank you for coming out. This is amazing. Uh, now, look, I know a lot of you uh, maybe know who I am, but I'm also aware that maybe this is your first time seeing my show. And I'm pretty sure right about now, you're thinking, I thought this was for the ADA, not the homeless. <laughs> How did this guy get in here? Seems like a classier joint than this. He's not even business casual. <laughs> All right, well, that's the beginning. <laughs> it's about 58 more minutes. So buckle up. Are you mocking me? <laughs> Can't help but notice you're saying everything that I say. So, so. <laughs> you guys are going to come to find that I'm very easily distracted. <laughs> Again, buckle up. It's nice to have that big screen up there. In case you didn't want to see me live right here. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is that necessary? I don't like it because every time I try to look up at myself, I look away. <laughs> Just damn it. <laughs> I got here uh, today. I live in Denver, Colorado. Oh, yeah. Everybody's excited about Colorado. <laughs> Since we legalized marijuana. I want you guys to know that I've been treating it like it was legal for years. <laughs> it's my medicine. I'm feeling much better. I'm so high, I don't even know what disability I have. I'll tell you though, it is a bitch being blind. <laughs> well, I was banging into stuff. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I know uh, swearing maybe offends some people. If it does, I apologize. But just think of it this way. I just have really well-timed Tourette's. <laughs> That's the great thing about having a disability. When you have one, you can have them all. <laughs> Nobody's gonna call you on that shit. <laughs> oh, she's coming back to yell at me. I saw it in her eyes. She's like, you gotta tone it down. Am I in trouble? Okay. You stop her if she comes out here, all right, man? <laughs> I guess the weed's wearing off. I can see again. <laughs> I kind of feel like I shouldn't be saying this in this nice place, but uh, just what's coming out. <laughs> I got here this morning, uh, walking around, beautiful city. I had somebody run up to me and go, hey man, are you in town? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you just keep looking for me, okay? I'll be wearing this. <laughs> Can't make this up, man. I love telling jokes, making people laugh, feels good. And I feel like the reason I'm so comfortable coming up here and telling you about my life is because I realized at a very young age that uh, when one door closes, it locks behind you. <laughs> 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 
just got to go to the next house. <laughs> Use a window if you have to. <laughs> Thanks, team. All right. Uh, let it all out, whoever that is. <laughs> One person dying, another. Ah! I can feel a few people like this. I don't know. Inappropriate. <laughs> yep, that's why it's funny. <laughs> kind of how this shit works. <laughs> and this too. <laughs> Like, where the hell did they think I was going, man? <laughs> There's enough leash here to go outside. <laughs> you guys want to go outside? <laughs> yeah, let me go check on my shopping cart. <laughs> Gotta lock them up nowadays. <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> So uh, when I left the Denver airport this morning, you guys know in the TSA line, there's a bin where they put all the liquids that they steal from you? <laughs> know what I'm talking about? There's like a big bin with water bottles and shaving cream and people's dreams. <laughs> well, on top of all that was also a giant, mostly empty bottle of ketchup. Just been on my mind. <laughs> Just been bugging the shit out of me all day. Like a 64 ounce bottle of ketchup, 58 of which were missing. Like, why? Why was that a travel item? <laughs> oh, my turn. Sorry. I... Not so important if I don't say anything, are you? <laughs> like how I made like a death trap for myself. All right. So. <laughs> oh, man. I love telling jokes, and uh, I guess I've realized that through my comedy, I've helped to bring disability into the limelight. And uh, what I wanted you guys to know is uh, that wasn't my intention. <laughs> like, I'm up here for very selfish reasons. People are like, oh, you're so inspirational. I'm like, I'm telling dick jokes. Like, <laughs> How low is your bar? <laughs> People are like, oh, you're so inspirational. All that you've accomplished and all that you've overcome. I'm like, well, that's really nice of you to say. But I gotta tell you, I'm a little uninspired because there's nothing wrong with you and you ain't done shit. <laughs> Why well, you gotta look at my dumb ass to feel better? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Some of you still. Ah. I thought this was a nice event. <laughs> I like that when you did that, that was good. <laughs> I hear about a lot of different disabilities and that's cool learning about different uh, way people live their lives, but sometimes it doesn't even make sense. People running up to me like, oh, you're so inspirational. You know, my uncle has rickets. Like Ricket. I don't even know what that is. Sounds itchy to me. <laughs> itchy Ricketts. <laughs> That'd be a good band name. I don't think they play here though. Also sounds like something old school Batman would say, like, holy itchy Ricketts, Robin. <laughs> Blam. Rickets. <laughs> Those rickets will jack you up, man. <laughs> this 
some of you look like you just don't want to laugh, but it's coming out. You're like, oh, shit, I should get to church and wash this off. Just hear you praying, oh, Lord, you know that I didn't know that he was going to say all that crazy shit. <laughs> Sorry, I made you say that, man. <laughs> you know, uh, I think we all realize that, yes, there are very many different types of disabilities in the world. I'm glad we're all here to celebrate that. But I think sometimes we don't realize that there's also a very large spectrum of many of those different disabilities. You know, and be it physical or mental. And I really believe that people can live their whole lives maybe just having a dab of this and a touch of that and never know why they're an asshole. <laughs> It's just you've been misdiagnosed. <laughs> Probably just got a dab of Asperger's or something. <laughs> Throw in some bed wetting. No wonder you're mad. <laughs> I lost you on that part. Okay. <laughs> Who's playing at the other end? That'd be great. <laughs> this has got to be one of the weirder venues I played. It's, I mean, it's lovely, but it's like I'm not on the big stage, I'm in the hallway where they go into the big one. <laughs> Disability is important, but not that important, apparently. <laughs> I mean, look, there's people standing up. We could have filled the first two rows. <laughs> okay. Is somebody typing all this down, too, on these screens? Oh, you poor bastard. <laughs> what? I, I can't see. Let me, just keep looking away. He deleted it. What happened? He deleted the bad word? Oh, OK. <laughs> I was hoping you were doing that the whole time on that one. <laughs> so the nice people in Mexico wouldn't be offended. <laughs> Too real? Okay. I know, ma'am. They're the ones that brought me here. <laughs> it's fun. Like I said, I love making people laugh. People need it. You know, as weird, part of being in the limelight is I get a lot of fan mail. And that's nice, people sending me nice stuff. It's kind of overwhelming. And then sometimes people send mean things and, you know, like, oh yeah, that does hurt, all right. Uh, and then, uh, but I just look at whenever someone writes something mean, it's just their disability. <laughs> Whatever disability that is, where you gotta write mean shit about a cripple on the internet, whatever that is. <laughs> Not sure they diagnosed that one yet. No. <laughs> Thanks, three people. <laughs> you know, sometimes I get these messages from people that are very nice, but ultimately it's just some very heavy shit. <laughs> people send me messages like, you know, my dad was dying of cancer, and we watched your show, and he laughed. And I am like, delete. <laughs> I can't be reading that, man. It's a lot of weight on a pothead shoulders. A lot of you are not ready for that one, I can tell. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to spend the rest of the show just trying to win back the delete people. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I recently, <laughs> never mind, I can't say that one. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, too late. I just, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, all right. Now, I've just learned along the way that a lot of disabled folks 
don't like to be called inspirational. And I know you think you're being really nice, but oh, you're so inspirational. But what we hear is, man, if I was you, I'd have killed myself. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> I don't think that's getting the delete people back. <laughs> it's okay, guys, you have a disabled friend. <laughs> Remember from earlier? <laughs> Tried to be clever, I guess I won't try that anymore. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I recently did a show where in the audience there was a man that was blind and deaf, which uh, he had uh, two interpreters. I guess it's like tactile signing and they sign into his hand. Now, first of all, like how is that even a thing? <laughs> like he was like laughing at all the right parts. I'm like, how do you tell him what a table is, let alone what I'm saying? And he's like, just, uh, it was amazing. This dude was amazing. So after a little while, I'm like, all right, well, I want to test this out. And I was like, look, dude, I don't even think you're disabled. I just think you like having these two ladies touching your hand like that. <laughs> and the crowd laughed. And then one of them typed it into his hand. And he goes like this, meh. <laughs> Which apparently in blind deaf means, shut up! <laughs> Meh. Get out of here, maybe. I, I, I almost pissed my pants, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> His timing was impeccable, man. His, that is amazing, though. That guy, like, I mean, it's just so inspirational. You know? <laughs> Man, if I was him, I'd have killed myself. I know. <laughs> I've seen some cruelty over the years about disability. And that's something I never understood. I guess what it is is ignorance most times. You don't know about something, so you push it away. But whenever someone's being mean about a disability, well, I think that person doesn't realize is that the disabled community is the largest minority group on the planet because they pile us all together. <laughs> if you're blind, get in a pile. <laughs> if you're deaf, help the blind guy find a pile. <laughs> if you got one leg, hop on. All right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll stop, I'll stop. <laughs> too easy, too easy. <laughs> but whenever someone's being mean about a disability, well, I think they don't realize is not only are we the largest minority group, but we're also the only minority group that you can join at any time. <laughs> You're just one bad bike ride away. <laughs> red Rover, Red Rover. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's getting the delete people back. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I had a crazy life, a lot of people don't know this about me, but for many years, I was a member of the U.S. Paralympic National Soccer Team. <laughs> Where were you guys at the games? <laughs> Could you use those 14 claps? <laughs> a lot of people don't know what the Paralympics are. It's the Olympics for people with physical disabilities. It's the second largest sporting event on the planet. Second only to the uh, able-bodied Olympics. <laughs> oh yeah, must be tough running with two legs. Huh? <laughs> I was on the team for eight years, traveled all over the world. 
was awesome. Unfortunately, I uh, got cut for doping, but uh, <laughs> wasn't performance enhancing. <laughs> I thought I should have got a medal for being able to play in that condition. <laughs> no, I didn't really get cut for doping. I just got old, you know, put more energy into the stand-up, less jogging, <laughs> more just standing up. <laughs> I, I don't know. I miss, I, let me get a little drink. You need some lotion? Maybe refresh your hands with a little moisture? Lotion? Thanks, some of you. <laughs> Again, me trying to be clever. All right. <laughs> uh, being on the team was amazing, though. Uh, I got to uh, go to the 04 Paralympics in Athens, Greece. And uh, we did not belong there. Uh, <laughs> we got our asses kicked. It was. Uh, I mean, it was amazing to be a part of that, but we, I mean, the first game against Russia, we lost 11 to 1. <laughs> and the 1 was them shooting on their own goal. <laughs> just to show off. And their goalie saved a bunch of their shots, too. <laughs> they were really good. Like, I was a spectator on the field, just like, oh, shit. Did you see that? A ball went right by me. <laughs> I mean, that Russian team was phenomenal. Like, they were playing at a different level than we were. Like, they were playing to eat, you know. They were <laughs> we lost 11 to 1. I'm eating a cheeseburger, smiling. <laughs> uh, it was amazing. I mean, the, some of those players on that Russian team, after a little while, I'm like, okay, there's nothing wrong with that guy right there. I call bullshit number five. <laughs> Better get a neurologist out here. <laughs> then I run by and be like, oh shit, his hands on backward. <laughs> Stupid backward hand, I hate that guy. <laughs> I did love that team, though. It was awesome. It was cool because I got to hang out with other physically disabled dudes. We've all been through some of the same stuff, you know? We just got really comfortable. We got so comfortable with our disability that we came up with this game where we would see who could hold open their jacked up hand longer. <laughs> like, ready, go. Okay. Ah, uh, shit, all right. <laughs> good game, good game. <laughs> Got you next time, dog. <laughs> Don't let me put my brace on. <laughs> One thing uh, I miss about being on that team is traveling with uh, everybody. Because to me, there's nothing more entertaining they're watching 12 dudes with cerebral palsy get off an airplane in a row. <laughs> Everybody in the terminal thinks there's some type of zombie invasion going on. <laughs> He's a goalie. None of us really walk like that. We just like messing around. <laughs> See how far through customs we can get. <laughs> Last one tase loses. <laughs> Luckily for me, I look like I've already been tased. <laughs> just a perk. Just a perk of being me.
One thing I don't miss about that team is our coach used to make us always dress as a team. And that's cool. Get to represent your country. But we're a bunch of disabled dudes trying not to stick out as it is. <laughs> All I'm saying, coach, is just give us a chance. <laughs> just a chance. <laughs> People walking by us like, oh, that's nice. They took them to the mall. <laughs> I love it. Telling jokes is so much fun, man. It's... I'll tell you, though, there is something in my life I love even more than coming up here and making people laugh. And that's being a dad. <laughs> Although I do think it's a little weird that you can accidentally make a person. <laughs> Seems like there should be a little more to it than that, huh? <laughs> I can't even make a birdhouse. and I made two amazing people. And then I have a pile of cut up boards. <laughs> and kids are expensive, man. Oh, 70 cents a day, my ass. <laughs> I'm sure the delete people are gone, right? They're all gone, man. <laughs> My son is seven years old. He's like the most amazing climber I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I mean, and his mom is Japanese. And I don't really think that has anything to do with it, but uh, <laughs> just picked a weird time to tell you that. So. <laughs> this kid's an amazing climber. Though. He's like Cirque du Soleil bound. I mean, I've seen, I've seen him shimmy up a crack in the kitchen wall. Oh, better get that fixed. He's not afraid to jump on me from any height. He's, oh, Danny's crazy arm will catch me. Wee! 35 feet's too high. He's the most sporadic eater I've ever met. It's insane. Like, one day, like for dinner, he'll have two raw carrots, and that, that's it. Just I'm like, are you sure? You can't have dessert then if you don't. And you don't want to scold him for eating carrots, but it's like, just you got to eat something else. And then the next day, like for dinner, he'll have nine hamburgers. You're like, what the hell? And one day he's like, <laughs> Uh, he was just eating like epic amounts. He's eyeballing my burger. I'm like, he's like, can I have that, Dad? I was like, ha. Oh. <laughs> you gonna finish it? Well, I was planning on it, but let's see how far we can push this. And then he ate more potato salad, and uh, I, I gave him two desserts. Like it was insane. Like I was like, if you can eat two, I want to see it. You know. And um, that night, I'm laying him down to bed. He looks at me all serious, like, Dad, I'm still hungry. <laughs> I was like, me too, motherfucker. <laughs> Remember when you ate mine? <laughs> I was like, Dad, what, what are we going to have for breakfast? I was like, man, I'm hoping tomorrow is a carrot day. And then in addition to my seven-year-old, I also have a five-year-old girl that lives in my house. You familiar with these psychopaths? <laughs> she is in charge of every goddamn thing on the planet. We're all scared of her. She comes in the room, I'm like, oh shit, she's coming over here. <laughs> Climb something, boy, save yourself. Just hide in my valuables. She's got an ear for like candy wrappers. 
She could be two rooms over, you open a bag of chips, she's like, boom! <laughs> what you got? <laughs> just take it, just take it. She says no to me like a grown man. I'm like, hey, sweetie, can I have that back? No, okay, cool. <laughs> you just keep daddy's phone. Put it with my computer, wherever that is. <laughs> Seriously, the cutest thing. She's also the most stubborn human I've ever met. In her four years of uh, being able to go on timeouts, I probably tried to put her on timeout like 900 times. And not once has it ever taken. <laughs> like my son was the opposite. He'd get in trouble. I'd be like, okay, dude, you're on timeout. He'd walk himself over to the spot, sit himself down, and then like three hours later, I'd be like, oh shit, hey buddy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so look, man, I don't even remember why you're here. You've obviously had some time to think about it. Why don't you go find something you like to do? Go on. My daughter, on the other hand, I can't even get her to look at the timeout spot. Like maybe you could try to physically put her over there, but you get scratched or bit. Like her timeouts have become me yelling at other people like, she's on timeout! Don't look at her! Don't talk to her! And if she approaches you, run away! In fact, everybody, why don't you come over here and we'll all huddle in the corner until she's done doing whatever the hell she wants to do. I'm not saying I'm a good dad, but I like it. <laughs> the kids are uh, very smart. Uh, you know, we all say that about our kids, but uh, they're pretty fluent in Japanese. Which, uh, yeah, makes me the odd man out. <laughs> Just be sitting there at the dinner table with them, like. <laughs> you guys talking trash about me? <laughs> Look, I know when you're all doing this, you're talking about me. Don't need Rosetta Stone for that one. Right? <laughs> oh, and sometimes she'll yell at the kids in Japanese, and it is terrifying. <laughs> and then the kids always come running over to me. I'm like, well, I don't know what she said. You better do that shit. And then when she yells at me like that, I just start cleaning the closest thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Is it this? Is it the shoes? The shoes? <laughs> you guys are uh, an amazing crowd. I'm, I'm really having a good time. You guys all right? So I know this might be a little different uh, from a uh, normal show, but uh, I'd like to do a little Q&A right now. Um, and that's uh, question and answer. <laughs> Some of you are looking like, I thought he had CP. I don't know what Q&A is. <laughs> is that contagious or? Uh, so if you have a question, the uh, lovely uh, people have the mics, two microphones going around the room. If you have a question, uh, Try me. <laughs> I dare you. If not, we can stand here awkwardly in the time that I allotted for this. <laughs> yes, here's a microphone, sir. How many goals did you score in your soccer career? Next question, please. <laughs> uh, See how this works, guys? No, I probably scored, uh, I honestly don't know, it's in the low 20s. Uh, a 
few on our own. But <laughs> I think we have one. Okay. Hi. What do you think of the presidential campaign? Oh. <laughs> Ma'am, don't get me started. <laughs> I like to lambaste all of them. All right. But let's just say I am going to be running for vice president in this upcoming election. Uh, and a lot of people don't run for VP, but I just want to be second in command. So. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I know I can't be president because I was born in Cameroon. So. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hey, Josh. Hi. Uh, so the State Department has 40 people watching the live stream right now. Those from poor bastards. <laughs> Uh, from Benjamin Franklin Library in Mexico City, and oh, they, they sent me a question. Oh. So they're wondering, uh, what advice do you have for aspiring comedians who have a disability? Uh, don't bother, I got this shit. <laughs> I, I, Probably should have whispered because it was in a library, but uh... <laughs> no, honestly, no. The real answer is just watch as much comedy as you can, uh, learn from the greats, and find out what you like and what you don't like. And uh, I think uh, the best way to be a comic is just surround yourself by funny shit. Okay. Uh, hi. Nice hi. hat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, I know. Uh, yeah. You know. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Last time you've been to Africa, yes. I hope. What do you think about uh, disabled in Africa and uh, their presidents? Yes. All of them? All? How many countries? <laughs> what, are you referring to any country in particular? Because this could take a while. Uh, uh, Shad. Oh, never heard of it. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, uh, I love Africa. That's where I'm from. I used to live in Senegal for a bunch of years, so I mainly know about Senegal. Wow, wow, Bakna. Uh, that's a little wolf for the folks out there. Uh, uh, I don't even know how to answer your question, sir. Do you have a better one? <laughs> Could you flip him off for me? Hi, Josh. I have a question back here. Yes. I have a question. You look very familiar. Were you on Last Comic Standing? Oh, uh, no. You probably just saw me around town. Just saw you around town? Okay, thank you. Panhandling. No, I won Last Comic Standing in uh, 06. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Very kind. I didn't pay her to ask that or not. I think we have a question over here. <laughs> Where'd you meet your wife? Oh, uh, next question again, please. <laughs> All right, how'd you pick her up? <laughs> <laughs> the real question is how I dropped her off. <laughs> No, I was, uh, I was dating her friend. Oh, I just answered the questions, guys. You want to know? I'm not shy. And by the way, meh. Who are you to judge? You don't know me. Oh, sorry, q and A's getting out of hand. Anyone else? So, Josh, I have another question from our viewers in Kigali, Rwanda. Okay, right on. All right, so uh, this is what they sent us. There has been so much progress on issues like gay rights, acceptance of transgendered people, and discussions of racism. Do you see similar progress or movement for the disabled? 
Uh, yes, in, in increments. It's coming along. 25 years we got to this point. I'd still at some point would like to be looked at as a viable human. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of ignorance still in the world about it. Uh, but again, it's not something that's going to change overnight. And uh, like all those, all the uh, different things that we struggle with. Hey guys, I'm not done. <laughs> it's not, uh, sir, I'm not. I'm like, we've heard enough. <laughs> what, what, what did, did I say something wrong? Did I offend the Rwandans? Well, can I come? <laughs> uh, well, thank you for the very descriptive explanation. <laughs> we have a question back here. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Hi, Josh. Hi. Which comedians inspired you, and can you do any impersonations of your favorite comedians? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I've always been inspired by Bill Cosby. <laughs> you want an impression? I'm just, I'm looking at people are really leaving now, that's funny. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no, I, I've always been a huge fan of Chris Rock. Uh, he's my all-time favorite. Um, Amazing uh, power of words that man commands. Uh, the stuff he says should not be funny, but the way he says it is not only funny, but educational. Uh, also a huge fan of Richard Pryor, uh, Eddie Murphy. Um, and uh, I've been actually getting to work with Dave Chappelle a bunch lately, and that guy is the real deal. And Mitch Hedberg, if anybody knows. All right, check them out. All right, we have another question. Oh, great. Hi, Josh. Hi. What do you like to do in your free time? <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> what would you like to do if you had free time? Um, I'm a big outdoors enthusiast. I love nature. I love hiking and climbing and <laughs> chopping trees down with machetes and <laughs> chopping wood, just all the stuff I shouldn't probably do ever. No, I do. I get to do that a lot, uh, actually. Uh, that's my favorite thing. Uh, and I love taking my kids out in nature and letting them see the other side of our planet. <laughs> Nothing funny there. All right. <laughs> All right. A couple more questions. How about one more, two more? Okay. Hi, Josh. How are you doing tonight? I've been fine so far. <laughs> I have a question for you. So my fiance Anna and I are here tonight. Yeah. And I was wondering, uh, well, we have similar per type of smart ass personalities. Would you perform at our wedding? Uh, for a large fee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, man, uh, let's talk afterward. I wanted you guys uh, to know that after the show tonight, I will be out just wandering around somewhere. <laughs> and if you'd like to follow me, please don't. <laughs> this shit is creepy. I still got people running up to me like, man, I've been following you since last comic standing. Well, I was wondering who that was. It was like nine years ago, you should come up and said hi and moved on. <laughs> Now, uh, after the show, I will be out. I have uh, uh, my DVD and CD, and uh, I also have some uh, handicap placards. <laughs> I figured I'm disabled, I could just make them. <laughs> I need to get one of those. All right, uh, deal. All right. 50 bucks a pop. <laughs> How about 25? Uh, deal. All right. All right, um, I'm curious to know, um, what, what? What's going on? You know, I don't know. There was like a, there's a bee or something. I don't know what's going okay, on. Okay, so it's your, your yeah. own disability? All right. Yeah, yeah. You see <laughs> bees? Right. Okay. Yeah. So my wife is pregnant. Um, Not mine, dude. Oh. 
Yeah. And uh, she's she's due on on January first, two thousand sixteen. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I'm curious to know what sort of advice you have on how to support my wife in her pregnancy and with delivery. Oh man, um, do you do drugs at all? <laughs> Maybe heavy drinking. <laughs> no, man. You know what? There's no advice really. Each each. A uh, new mother is its own trap that you have to figure out. <laughs> Good luck, man. I feel for you. <laughs> Definitely the drinking thing. Yes, yeah, sir. So far, as a comedian, I'm just curious to know, what is oh. your most embarrassing moment? Uh, well, I was just trying to figure out who was talking. <laughs> like, that is not how I thought his voice would sound. <laughs> That again. <laughs> What's the most embarrassing moment? This. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I've had a few. I don't know. It's a, there's just so many to pick from. No, you know what? I, uh, I don't know if I have the ability to get embarrassed, actually. <laughs> I'll, uh, maybe if I... Never mind. What is that backpack you have there, sir? Captain America? Can you show the audience that? <laughs> now, I might be embarrassed if I had that. But... <laughs> Man. Hey, you guys are awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs>